So here we go with this one. Uh, I've done some kind of undercoat painting and started to generally make a mess. So no point, I'm not going to take all this apart again. We can see greens and aluminiums and stuff through the polythene bag. So um, it's time to cut some bits off the sprue and glue them together. Did you enjoy that thrilling view of a manky polythene bag? It was worth coming back for, wasn't it? So, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming and, and viewing that. <clears throat> the world's most dismal, truly dismal uh, unboxing video. And um, what a mess. What a total mess. Things don't buck up, I can tell you now, because I've travelled back in time from the future. You didn't know I could do that, did you? And uh, nor did I. And uh, this is, I warn you now, it's a shambles. You're probably getting that feeling already, won't you? And there's the torso, I was going to say. Fuselage, nothing wrong with the word torso, I'm sure. Um, largely went together well. Uh, just a few bits needed, a bit of a squeeze. It's all extremely precise these days. No room for error. And, uh, well, that's all right. Going to tidy up a little bit of the interior. And then I suppose it's time to do the fella. And we'll swiftly be moving on to the wings, I think. Oh, yes, I remember why I stopped at that point. This part here, number G2, painted green and black or well, it will be very shortly uh, you get three of them with very slight differences so you can see particularly there this is the one we want and then this one appears to be exactly the same possibly apart from that I could be wrong. Anyway, it all implies, because you don't get a question mark on this piece, it all implies that uh, these are parts for very different versions of the Spitfire. Not that I am an expert in the upper front bodywork of the fuselage of any aircraft whatsoever, but that is quite clearly or uh, well, there are quite clearly three so we can have fun with the spare bits I suppose it don't fit at all by a long way definite work to be down there we're in the kitchen again by the way uh, anyway um, this here bit that doesn't fit I've worked out uh, the problem is that the interior seems to be a little bit too large and it's forcing the fuselage outwards and so you get that happening where you can see the bow and uh, what I've done, the only thing I can do without major surgery, there we go, let's get the light in our favour ish so what I've done is I've bent this bit outwards to match that but it still leaves this bowing in because that is bowing out which means what I needed to do was just file down some of the interior to make it a little bit smaller. Too late now. So, this is a, a major job for filler. So if you haven't made this one yet, I think I'm a bit late to the party on this one, but if you haven't made this one yet, that's what you've got in store. Anyway, here it is, with a bit of tail on. And even that looks a bit off, doesn't it? Maybe that is just the light. 
Oh, can't see. Uh, it does look a bit creaky, doesn't it? Uh, I'm tempted to get the filler out at this point, but let's just keep soldiering on and hopefully things will start to pull together. Uh, we're on to the wings and the underside. I have, as I often do, I have done three shades of whatever your main colour is. So there's a very pale, almost bluey front edge. The main body is a little bit more yellow than one might expect and then towards the rear. Uh, the correct colour, let's put it that way. You can see down the central section as well. I might, just to deal with things like this, just get the correct colour and add a little white to just highlight some areas. So there's a good bit of detail under there. So I think I'll put it on and see how it looks. Something that's been noticeable in more up-to-date Airfix models uh, over time. Oh, look at that. Now I've got that in the light. Anyway, um, is that there are fewer and fewer fixing pins and I was going to say lug holes, but you know what I mean. Um, to the point where there are none on this. There is a rib there, or a step really, there. Ooh, rough paintwork. Uh, yeah, there's a step. And that is about all for guiding you in. There's the interior of the, the other side of the wing. So there's a ring will fit in there and bars across. But this is... Uh, my mates and I have been debating whether this is um, a good or a bad thing. I think it's a very intelligent thing you see in an awful lot of Eastern European models for a very, very long time. Uh, it suggests we're not kids, but when it gets to this point I lose my nerve and think if only there were a couple of pins in our goals. Okay, we've got a problem, or as they say, Luton, we've got a problem, or is it Houston? One of the two. Anyway, you see a wing malarkey. Uh, I'm actually, <laughs> for once, I put the camera on a tripod because this is going to take a lot of hands. If you fit, hmm, I might have to pick it up anyway because of the light. If you fit the fuselage on, you get very mm, wrong end. You get very big gaps up here. Now I know I'm just like laying it out, but if you look at the gaps on either side, they're huge. And not only that, this is where the tripod's going to earn its keep. We. Unlike some Airfix kits I've done recently where they virtually clip together. Look at that. Now obviously you're going to say, well, push it down. But it doesn't want to push down. Because, whee! See, that kind of thing happens. Because the... Let's get some light on this. Because this here kind of cradle within the model sticks out too far. Here's our line, and that is jutting out way too much. And I made sure I put this in correctly because I've encountered problems with interiors before, but certainly not on the Hasegawa Messerschmitts. I have even taken the horrific liberty of, while it was still tacky, shoving this section of the wing back this way to create a gap there because it's easier to fill and less likely to present an horrific uh, outlook, so to speak. So this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. Um, it reminds me of 
I think one of the last models I ever made was the FX1 24th scale um, what was it? Fock Wolf where I did all the interior then it wouldn't fit in the fuselage at all I think that contributed to me giving up on models so anyway uh, this really is quite nasty and it's taken the fun out of it I am going to have to hack that section off aren't I it's the only option obviously the, the wings can bow up a little to help fill that gap but if I bowed them up all the way it would look more like a flapping bird than a Spitfire so I'm not happy and I've checked I did I I went through the interior um, extraordinarily carefully because as I say I've experienced this kind of thing before with interiors uh, and I made sure I'd got everything as per the specifications that obviously isn't good enough and for the price of these things these days I expect better particularly as we're moving into a bit of an economic crisis these days aren't we thank goodness I've got a big stash of models to make not happy so that's the amount I've had to hack off to get just that end of the wing section to fit and I did wonder originally that that little gap there see can I get in anyway that little gap there I thought well I might be able to fill it with a bit of glue or something tidy the whole seam up uh, it should have told me that things weren't fitting inside shouldn't it so I'm going to have to glue this in stages which is really hard work or have like five hands I don't think I've got little clamps and I've got little bands and all sorts I don't think they're going to do it because the shape's too complex so I'm just going to I'll try gluing it all in one go and just holding it all down but I suspect I'm going to be holding it for a very long time we'll see how it goes I've uh, reverted to the um, the tripod again because I'm holding the model together and I've I've had to set the camera up and the um, and the computer and everything with basically with my t little, two little fingers um, I've been holding the wing to the fuser the wings to the fuselage for some time and the struggle is incredible but I've been able to just type with my little finger because I'm standing here for ages I'm going to watch something I've been able to type into the computer um, Airfix 148 Spitfire Mark 1 da, da, da. Um, and uh, there, there isn't much that's coming up straight away but I saw this Airfix Spitfire Mark 14 model build review by Champion Scale Modeling who I've n not looked at before um, but he's basically discovering the same problems that I am so I feel like I'm I'm with a friend here uh, and he's looking look at this he's looking at the wing roots and it's just phenomenal and he says something like this is just unforgivable which in this day and age it is isn't it you know and um, he starts the whole thing off by saying he's He's basically not going to carry on with the model. Uh, this isn't good, is it? You know, there's loads of people out there making these things and doing uh, jobs to, you know, perfection with them. But under duress, really, with an awful lot of extra work to be done. Um, and I know a lot of people enjoy that, but there are times when I feel like I've I'm not having a day off, I'm, I've gone back to work you know, it's all tools and uh, and stuff and I'm trying to do this as a form of relaxation, meditation you know, mind expanding 
all of that kind of thing and it ain't happening with this one so I'm not alone in struggling with these things even the other versions are not happy beings so airfix come on pull yourself together I've just gone back and checked and he says surely that's unforgivable unforgivable isn't it for a brand new kit that's the point isn't it that is the point uh, spinner and wheelie bits that's undercarriage but wheelie bits to me um, they're they're drying and they will go on shortly and with everything as compressed and held down as possible this is as good as it gets so it would be a huge investment in filler basically wouldn't it uh, perhaps that's the plan for all you oh look oh that's dropped I'll sort that out for all you conspiracy theorists out there that's why it's happening I think it's rushed and shoddy design work uh, did that just get darker? Am I running out of battery? Anyway, so last few major pieces to put on, then man and glassware, and then paint, and uh, well, I might paint before the glass, and then throw it from a high window, something like that. Oh, do you know, the pleasure's just going out of this something chronic. Uh, it is <laughs> just nothing fits. That's just the should be the title of this little film. Nothing fits. I've just been fiddling around with that. And you've got to cut a bit off. We've well, got to cut the whole thing out. And it's like, well, just make a different part. You've made a wrong part if I've got to spend me time. In, in you know, oh, it's, uh, oh, I give up. Oh. Here you go, mate. You like aeroplanes, don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's it. It's very glued. It's glued. It's glued. It's very glued. Mm -hmm. Beep beep. That's your telly handler. There is a little man in there, isn't there? He's a pilot. He's with his he helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really good. That's <laughs> it is, good. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's the tail. Did you go?